Okay, Rodney. This is your Galaxy DX2547. A couple of things I need to show you about it. I wanted to show you the inside of it before. Uh, put the covers back on it. See, I've increased the input buffer to a 4700 microfarad 25 volt. I've increased the voltage regulator buffer to a 3300 microfarad. And let's see, there's all your little blue Schottky diodes. These new ones are coming with uh, green striped, they look like the germanium diodes. I'm not real sure. See that? They look like germanium diodes, but uh, they could be shot keys. You never know. Some kind of new style, but they're they're in the large case, the old style case. So that's what makes me think that they're germaniums. But anyway, I've replaced all the shot keys. I've did the receive upgrades on it. Uh, there's your Lescom L3S3B. All right. And on the front, this is your band switch. Middle is CB. Over to the left is, uh, you know, the lower channels. They start at 515. Now that, you know, I mean, that frequency counter changes. You can see 26955 on channel 40, and that's because that 10.240 megahertz crystal is not exactly on frequency and there's no adjustment for it. So, well, there is, but man, you just can't get it any closer than what it is. The further you get away from uh, the normal CB channels, the more you frequency moves off of center. All right, that's your lower channels. And CB, let's go to the upper channels. Okay, that's channel 40. That's channel one on the uh, upper band. That's the channel 19 position is your high channels. Middle is CB or normal. Nine is your low channels, okay? Now, your Roger Beat button is your plus 10. Okay, see the Roger Beat light come on there and then it go up 10 KCs. Okay. Uh, let's see. That's not your high channel. If you go to channel 40 and then hit the Roger Beat button, you got one more channel. All right, yeah. let's do a little power check here. Let me switch to the dummy load. We are, let's see, on channel 40, lower sideband. RF power is turned all the way up. We're on the bottom scale on this meter, on the 100 watt scale right there. That's 40 watts, 20 watts, and that little line there in the middle is 30 watts. Okay, now this is peak power on the times one scale. This guy here is average power, and we're reading on the 100 watt scale on him. He has a 100 watt slug in him right there. Okay. Audio, audio one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. Audio. See, we're bouncing, bouncing the 40 watt position. Okay, that's on lower side band. I'm switching to AM. All right, we're dead kin right at what is that? Five watts. One, two, three, four, five. Yep, dead kin, five watts. Audio. Uh, Swings to about 40. That's with the power all the way up.
Now you can't discern it on this meter, but I can on this one. When you dial it all the way down, it drops down to about one and a half to two watts, okay? But it'll swing way on up there anyway. Audio one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. So it goes uh, almost to 40 watts again. Even with the RF power turned way down. So it's got a lot of swing to it. But it's uh, got good reports on it on sideband. Uh, made a couple of contacts on AM and just asked for a radio check. And they said, yeah, it's working. And that's all they said. But uh, it's getting ready to put the covers on it. It's finished. Now, when you get it back, get the take. Go ahead and take this tape off. The tape is to protect the uh, bezel on this thing. I'm just going to leave the tape on there this time. I think the one that the first one you ordered, I had taken the tape off. But I'm just going to leave it on there. Uh, when I get the covers on it, I'll be back. More to come. I forgot to show you the receiver. That's on channel 19. And I'm on the uh, negative 60 dB scale at a 1. Should be 9, an S9, which it is. Okay. Side bend. Rodney A in North Carolina. Here we go. Got the covers on it. I told my son uh, that I wanted to do something a little special for you. Since that other one, the covers on it looked so bad. Had all those scratches on it. So he took the radio and polished up the covers for me. Look at those things shine. Looks good. I, I may not order to make a video of this because everybody may want it done. <laughs> it, it really looks good. Now I'm scared to touch it. I'll grab it by the tape here in the front. Turn it up so you can get a good shot of the sign. He used that, some of the stuff that he uses on his car. That mother's stuff cleaned it up real nice for me shined it up really looks nice now he did tell me he didn't polish up the bottom so if you turn it upside down the the, the bottom of it's not go, gonna be all shined up like this is okay all right there it is now I just turned the radio back on, so it's got to warm up. Once it warms up and stabilizes, then the frequency should stay, you know, real close. But uh, this is a CB radio. It doesn't have a uh, crystal warmer in it, crystal oven. Just got a regular old crystal. So they drift a little bit. But, yeah, I can't get over that. That really looks good. And you can see, no scratches. I really am sorry about that first one. I still don't know what happened with that. But, I'm going to see if I can't put this one inside of a, uh, uh, make a bubble wrap bag to go around it. So just put it in that plastic bag and put it back in the box. It, yeah, well, it, when I first saw that, I thought, well, damn, that's how it got scratched up. But uh, I don't remember seeing those when I first took it out. And this one was in the plastic bag, and I took it out, and I don't see any scratches on it. So 
Couldn't have been from just riding in the box. I don't know how they got on there. But anyway, there you go. All right. Now I'm on the dummy load now. I'm not connected to an antenna. Let's see, where is the antenna? Hook it up. We've got thunderstorms coming in, so I probably won't be able to hear any skip anyway. Can't hit that hole. There's one thing I wish that Galaxy would do. These damn little feet on the bottom of this thing. They're very flimsy. Oh, uh, and they won't stay folded up. You know, they keep falling down. So. My advice is to fold them up, maybe put a piece of tape over them or something and just leave them folded up. Otherwise, you could break them real easy. At least it seems to me that you can. On the external antenna, yep, I'm on the external antenna. You can see it's quiet, I don't hear anything. It's about four o'clock in the afternoon here. We'll be getting some thunderstorms. Well, I, in fact, I've already heard some of the lightning crashes on the radio. Just looking to see what I can find. Too bad this one don't have squelch scan on it. Set the squelch, flip the button, and wait on it to find something. Now, you notice, what's the frequency? Got to have a goal in There's right 21. Day, day. 22, 23, 255, see there? 22 is 225, 23 is 255. Now 24, I'll go back to 235. And then 25 is 245, 26 picks back up, 265. All right. If you go back down here, let's say the channel four, see how it skips from 26.985 to 26.005? You want to get that at A channel, you just put it back on channel three, push the Roger beat button in, pick up that skip channel. Also one between channel 19 and channel 20. Number 19, hit the button, 195. Like I said, the only thing that we're hearing right now is local traffic because of, because of the thunderstorms coming in. Okay, that pretty much does it. I'll uh, get the video made and, and upload it on YouTube. 
Well, I like those covers. Okay, Rodney. Hope you enjoyed the radio. It was my pleasure to build it for you. 73s, everybody. <laughs>